Kardashev Scale of Civilizations Type 1. Planetary Civilization It uses and stores all the energy available on its planet, as well as the energy from its star that reaches the planet. Type 2. Stellar Civilization It harnesses and directly controls the energy output of its entire star. Type 3. Galactic Civilization it controls and utilizes the energy of an entire galaxy. Type 0. Human Civilization We are still below Type 1. We currently rely on a fraction of our planet's available energy and have yet to fully harness even the energy that reaches us from the Sun. This scale was originally created in 1964 by a Russian astrophysicist named Nikolai Kardashev who was trying to figure out just how advanced alien civilizations could be. He thought the best clue might be their energy use. And while listening for cosmic radio signals, Kardashev realized that truly advanced civilizations would need huge amounts of power. So much, in fact, that they might harness their entire planet, their star, or even their whole galaxy. Hello, and welcome to the realm of secrets. As you can see, our civilization is nowhere near becoming a Type 1 cosmic civilization. According to some scientists, we may only reach that level in the next 200 to 500 years, if we don't blow ourselves up first, of course. During that period, we should harness all the energy of planet Earth, including energy from volcanoes, wind, oceans, and waves. Even though we are already using some of these sources, which currently make up about 20% of global energy consumption, we are still far from our full potential, since our biggest energy source remains fossil fuels, which won't last forever. Now, what is the biggest source of energy that comes to your mind? The source of energy that overshadows everything on our planet? The sun, of course. The correct answer is the sun. Today, I've got a wild story, or should I say, a cosmic theory for you. Ever heard of a Dyson Sphere? Hang on, we'll get to that. But first, let's meet the star that's been driving astronomers crazy. KIC 8462852, aka Tabby Star or Boyajian Star. It was named after Tabitha Suzanne Boyajian, the astronomer who first noticed its bizarre anomaly that has left scientists searching for answers for years. And when I say anomaly, I mean dramatic dips in brightness, up to 22%, happening at completely unpredictable intervals. This is exactly what leaves scientists baffled. How do you explain a star losing so much light, as if something massive keeps passing in front of it? Many theories have been proposed. A group of giant planets obscuring the star, a massive asteroid field, an enormous swarm of comets, clouds of plasma, and even clouds of dust. I've probably left out a few theories, but it doesn't matter. All of them have flaws, and none can fully explain why Tabby's star loses up to 22% of its light at times. When I say flaws, I'm referring to the scientists' struggle to explain this mystery, primarily because of its unpredictable behavior. After years of brainstorming, some astrophysicists began proposing the Dyson Sphere Theory, the only idea that could potentially explain such a significant loss of starlight. And this leads us to a big question. What exactly is a Dyson Sphere, and why is it such big news? The concept of the Dyson Sphere began as a theoretical thought experiment by physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson. Observing that all technological civilizations continuously increase their demand for energy, he concluded that humanity would eventually reach a point where we'd be forced to harness the full power of the sun, but not in the way you might imagine. No solar panels on rooftops or collectors on the ground? No, no. Dyson thought far beyond what most people could even imagine. He proposed a system of orbiting structures designed to capture all the energy emitted by our star, our sun, essentially creating a vast, artificial shell or swarm that would allow a civilization to utilize nearly all of its stellar energy output. And now we return to Tabby's star, because many scientists have proposed, among other theories, the idea of a Dyson sphere under construction, built by some fantastically advanced civilization 1,280 light-years away. 
And this is remarkable news for modern science, because when it comes to the topic of extraterrestrial civilizations, most scientists would usually laugh it off. This might be the first time they themselves have seriously proposed such a solution to a cosmic mystery. The truth is, scientists and all of us who follow this kind of news really have no idea. Much of it is speculation about what causes the Tabby's star anomaly, and we can theorize day and night, but until we actually show up there and investigate directly, we simply won't know. We still don't know what's hidden in the depths of our own oceans, so how could we possibly say what's happening around a star 1,280 light years away? But in short, I really like the theory of the Dyson Sphere, and that's exactly why I decided to make this video. Because the Dyson Sphere represents the future of humanity, and this isn't science fiction, it's the future of our civilization. Whether it happens in 1,000 years, 5,000 years, or even 10,000 years doesn't really matter. What matters is that it will happen. Of course, under one condition, if we don't destroy ourselves first. Sadly, we are still much better at destroying than we are at creating. Technically, there's nothing stopping us from starting today, but practically speaking, it's pretty much impossible right now. The project is insanely massive and would cost a fortune beyond anything we can imagine. Yet who can say what the future might bring? In fact, when we talk about a Dyson Sphere, it's important to note that most scientists today see a Dyson Swarm as a far more realistic alternative. Instead of building a single solid shell completely enclosing the sun, which would be almost impossible to construct, a Dyson Swarm would consist of countless individual satellites or structures orbiting the sun, each capturing a portion of its energy. These independent collectors could be built gradually, piece by piece, and added over time as technology advances. This modular approach makes it far more practical and achievable than an enormous rigid sphere. Beyond the Dyson Sphere and the Dyson Swarm, some have proposed a Dyson Web, a vast interconnected network of solar collectors forming a giant net around the sun. Though still purely theoretical, it could offer more stability and easier coordination than a fully independent swarm. In any case, it remains far beyond our current capabilities. But maybe one day, it could become a reality. And while the Kardashev scale is a fascinating way to measure civilizations by energy usage, some scientists have proposed extensions to it, including Type IV and Type V civilizations. A Type IV civilization would harness the energy of the entire universe, manipulating space-time, dark matter, and dark energy. Meanwhile, a Type V civilization might exist beyond our comprehension, possibly creating or simulating universes themselves. These higher types remain purely theoretical, but they push the boundaries of imagination and raise profound questions about the future of intelligence in the cosmos. And if you're interested in watching a detailed video about how the Dyson theory could actually work, I've left a link in the top corner. It's an amazing video with a deep explanation of how it could be built and what it would take to construct it. Don't miss it. Some of you might be thinking now, what nonsense is this? But do you know who these two men are? Take a closer look and think carefully. Who do you see? They were Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Wright brothers, and we should all know them. They were pioneers of aviation, who refused to give up even when everyone laughed and claimed that humans would never fly. And what about Carl Friedrich Benz? The inventor of the first true gasoline-powered car was also mocked by the public. People believed the car would never replace the horse and carriage. We all know how that story turned out. There are countless examples throughout history, and visionaries have always been ridiculed by an ignorant public. We must understand that the average inhabitant of our planet is not particularly smart, and some are even less so. In the age of the internet, being ignorant is a choice, since so much knowledge is just a few clicks away. So, never say never, and don't claim that something is impossible. Because impossible is only a description of our current limitations. You're watching the Realm of Secrets channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.